Hey guys, welcome back to Cretaceous Cast. I'm uh, really sorry it's been such a long time. Today's video is not going to be like others, really. This one's unscripted. This is just me doing my own thing. Um, today I'm going to just, I'm going to try to like go over several paleo topics and I'm going to see if I can do this on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Um, it's taken me such a long time to do a paleo video. I mean, like, if you think about it, the last one I did was that Nano Tyrannus video a long time ago. And, uh, college is really tough, ironically. I'm not making paleo videos because I'm studying to be a paleontologist-ish. I mean, I haven't actually taken anything paleo-related in a while. But anyway, that's a, that's a off-topic. Um, but yeah, I feel like doing these kind of like ad-lib, um update videos on what what kind of cool stuff is going on in paleo i feel like it could really maybe be a new fun step in my channel and uh don't worry guys this isn't it i i have actually been working on several projects with this channel one of them i'm almost done with the other is like halfway done uh the second project is going to be very special i am really proud of it and i hope you guys will like it it's unlike anything that's ever been on the channel before so yeah, for the first kind of thing I'm going to talk about today is there was a new type of Carcharodontosaur discovered, I believe in South Africa. So this this guy, this dinosaur, is called Siam Raptor Suwadi. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not exactly sure. This dinosaur is from the Lower Cretaceous, so the Aptian Epoch. Um, so that would have been like around 113 million years old. And he was found in the Kak Kruat Formation. Um, but yeah, this guy was found in Thailand and is one of the most important discoveries there. First of all, it's a rat. From what I understand, Siam Raptor is the most complete dinosaur that they found from the early Cretaceous in the Thailand area. They found uh, all sorts of bones from the skull and somewhere on the pelvic region, some vertebrae. And uh, some feet bones. So, to be exact, they have found a uh, pre-maxilla, uh, which is like the snout bone. Maxilla, which is part of that. Jugal, which is like the cheek bone. Serangular, pre-articular, articular. Vertebrae, manual, ungual. So, like, um, yeah, that's one of the claws. Um, ischium, tibia, and... Uh, it says pedal phalanx, so that's one of the feet bones. That's for all you guys who like really specific anatomy. Taxonomy-wise, it's obviously part of Allosauria. You know, it's a carnosaur. It's, sand it's sandwiched right between like Allosaurus and Neovenator. It's one of the earlier Carcharodontosaurs, so it's up a decent amount higher than Car Carcharodontosaurus on the on the very bottom of the taxonomy tree. Next up, we have a really awesome and fascinating article, which really captured my um, interest this week, about using spectrometry to observe fossils and their proteins as well. Um, and for me personally, this this really uh, got home because I'm taking Gen Chem right now. I don't like it, but I was like, why am I taking this when it's not going to have anything to do with my career as a paleontologist? And this article proved me... 100% wrong. Now, something I've been very interested in for years is how proteins are preserved in these just ancient bones. And using spectrometry can help us understand this and much more. It can even be used for comparing, like seeing where an animal will fit taxonomically, like what it is, how it's related to something else. It, and it does that by using a laser on whatever organic object you want to test and the the laser will help you see what kind of bonds you have going on what kind of chemical bonds you have going on inside of this organic object because every chemical bond will absorb the wavelength differently what i thought was really cool about this article was that it looked at um, the bones of Allosaurus and Deinonychus to see if they were warm-blooded by using the spectrometry process and they came out as animals that had a very high metabolism, which I think is really neat because we're still having this debate in paleontology to this day as to what level dinosaurs uh, were when it came to their metabolisms. And interestingly enough, Triceratops in their research 
um, came out as having a lower metabolism, which I think is just super interesting. This study is being conducted at the Yale Peabody Museum uh, with, um, I think, forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, Yasmina Wyman and uh, Dr. Derek Briggs. And I'm going to put all of the stuff I'm talking about today in the description below, so make sure to check out everything I've mentioned. So uh, what do you guys think about all of this stuff? Um, I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. Um, if you have anything else cool paleo-wise, make sure to tell me about it. And if I messed up, make sure to tell me about it. Uh, this, this channel is not... It's, it's about, you know, just talking about dinosaurs and stuff and everyone trying to learn as much as they can. So I hope you enjoyed. And remember, everyone, evolve or go extinct.